What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened on the Go Home episode of Monday Night Raw. The most noticeable things, of course. SummerSlam is right around the corner, and I was expecting a little bit more from this Go Home show for SummerSlam. It seemed like they were kind of on autopilot. We got a new, a couple things advancing storylines, but most of the storylines are already set in stone. And we're going to see how they culminate at this year's SummerSlam. So it kind of felt like an autopilot kind of episode. But there were a few things on here that I definitely did enjoy and I wanted to talk about. First things first, we got to talk about CM Punk uh, versus uh, Drew McIntyre with Seth Rollins as a special guest referee. So they started off the show with that. And this whole segment was to basically say you know set the rules for what seth is going to be doing as the ref you would think it would be regular referee duties most likely it's not and it wasn't so seth comes out there in this very flamboyant uh wrestling gear <laughs> very flamboyant wrestling shirt it definitely looked like a wrestler's blouse or something definitely was in his uh wife's closet you knew that was going to kind of happen. He came out there, and CM Punk came out there, and then Drew McIntyre came out there. And um, essentially, Seth had uh, laid out the rules. Um, well, first, before they even really get into it, they Seth made it a point that they can't touch each other. If they have any physical contact with each other, the match will be off. CM Punk didn't want to have anything to do with that. So he just gets out the ring and gets by the announcement table because he's like, bro, I don't even, I'm not worried about y'all. I'm worried about myself and what I may do. So I think it's best for me to be out here. And then Seth was like, see, you're trying to make it all about you. Get in the ring and listen to what I have to say. You had Drew over there chiming in. Like, I can con contain my composure. You, unless, you know, I don't know why you can't contain your composure unless you're, you're scared or whatnot. So finally, after Seth is pretty much saying, get your ass in my ring. You have to do what I tell you to do. That's when CM Punk gets in the ring and he's like, oh, you're enjoying this. Like you're enjoying having this power over me. Cool. I just want to make this very clear with you, Seth, that um, I don't want your help. I don't need your help. Just make sure that's not the situation don't i don't need any type of help or want any type of help from you in any situation in our match and then drew was trying to essentially i guess you can say buddy up with seth he's like look i know we've had our issues we have this professional rivalry but there's one thing we can agree on cm punk is a cancer to this business he's a cancer to wwe he's poisoning the kids everywhere i go people's chanting cm punk he is a cancer that we need to remove so he's trying to align himself with seth rollins which makes sense they both hate cm punk and seth's like man i'm tired of hearing both y'all talk y'all shut up and let me say what i need to say now i don't like cm punk this is what seth said i don't like cm punk I don't like you either. Like, if there's anybody that don't like you, as much as CM Punk doesn't like you, Drew, it's me and vice versa for CM Punk. So, at the end of the day, how things are going to go down is simple. <clears throat> Y'all are going to listen to me. Y'all are going to listen to my rules and what I say goes. The reason that this is happening, because you two idiots keep putting your hands on referees and officials. They don't want to be a part of this match. So I decided to step into that role and I'm going to regulate. So if there's a situation where someone uh, is about to tap out and I don't call the tap out, then I don't call it. If there's a situation where there's a count out, uh, you know, type deal, then if I, I want to count to 10, if I want to count to 20, if I want to count to a million, I can do that. Um, no disqualification? Ah. Maybe we'll see. Like, essentially, this match is going to boil down to anything goes. And Seth is just going to be there <laughs> to count the pin. <clears throat> but he also made it a very uh, serious point that if you guys even try to get out of line with me, I'm going to put your head in the ground. So it's going to, they're already planting the seeds that I can see a potential possibility of Seth is going to get involved. 
Seth is going to probably put his hands on both of these individuals and it may uh, inadvertently cost one of them the match. I'm thinking on CM Punk side of things, I think it's going to be something like that. So now we get to Drew and CM Punk's back and forth. And this was very entertaining. Drew made it very clear. He was like, look, what happened at the Royal Rumble, me injuring you, that wasn't even on purpose. I was just going out there to rough you up. I didn't even intend for me to injure you. And then look what happened. He was out for like seven months, six, seven months. Imagine what I'm going to do to you now that I finally get my hands on you. See, I'm calm right now. I'm good right now. But when that bell rings on Saturday, I'm going to hurt you. You have screwed me out at WrestleMania. You screwed me over in my hometown at Clash at the Castle. And then you screwed me over again at uh, Money in the Bank. So on Sunday, when that bell rings, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to break your jaw. I'm going to break some bones. I am going to murder you. He literally said that. Like he's letting it be known he's going to try to commit murder on television. And he said, it's it's really crazy. I'm going to get paid so much money to destroy you when in actuality, I would do this for free. <laughs> Such a good heel promo. He's ready to crash out. I love this. And CM Punk loved his jab back at him. He's like, Drew, at the end of the day, you needed to hurt me. Me getting injured was the best thing for you because this is the most over you've ever been. You hurting me is the most over you've ever been. In fact, you need this more than me. If you want to be honest, you're the third wheel. He called him the third wheel essentially in this situation between, you know, him involving Seth and, and CM Punk. He's like, you're the third wheel in actuality. Like, you will finally be able to breathe the air around me, my aura, essentially, as the kids say. Like, I'm the reason why you're this popular. It's because of me. But you made a very crucial mistake. You injured me. And it worked out for you. But the fact that you injured me is going to be a problem for you. And he basically let it be known, like, hey, Come Sunday, I'm going to kick your ass. It's as simple as that. And there ain't going to be nobody there to help you. You're going to be by yourself in this. And once he brought that up, I was waiting for Drew to do it. He pulled out the bracelet, the AJ Lee bracelet and his dog name on it. And CM Punk got right up in his face. And you can tell he wanted to hit him. He wanted to sock him in the face. And they talking shit. This was so good so damn good i enjoyed this because once again we're gonna see these guys like really go at it bro you know like now the verbal stuff that's done we're you know we've, we've seen them go back and forth for months we've seen them attack each other and screw each other out of situations so it's like you know what we're back here once again drew cm punk but now we're actually getting a match out of it and i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to it i think it's going to be great um honestly i don't think it's going to be much of a match especially the way seth rollins was you know putting it i think this is more it's just going to be brawl and chaos and people want to see this match i can't wait to see the promo package for this particular match it's going to be so good so i'm excited this was the most exciting thing for me on Monday Night Raw. So I, I was really looking forward to that. Um, we also got to talk about the whole Liv Morgan situation. There was a, a, uh, earlier in the show, the Judgment Day uh, area where they all hang out with that was all trashed and destroyed. And there was words everywhere written like liar. And it was basically Liv. Liv destroyed the judgment day uh, playhouse she even burnt the ps5 so Liv is coming off like the crazy ex and we see another vi video vignette of her by this barrel or a trash can that's on fire and she's right in front of the production truck with dominic mysterio's face on it and she's basically like 
you're a liar. You broke my heart. She crossed out his name in fo on photos and she's burning stuff, pictures of him and, and merch of his. And essentially she's giving the crazy X vibe. So she's like, you know what? At SummerSlam, I'm going to still continue my revenge tour. I'm going to take out Rhea since you love her so much. I'm going to hurt her. I'm going to take her out. I'm going to still be the women's uh, world champion when it's all said and done. And now it's she hates Dominic. The question being how this will play out going into SummerSlam, I still think Rhea will lose this, but I do think Dominic is going to be an important part on why Liv wins. And I can see a situation where Dominic accidentally, once again, helps out Liv and costs Rhea the match. And then I can see next night on Monday Night Raw, uh, or on, you know, after, you know, I think, uh, yeah, it, the show's on Saturday. So on the next Monday Night Raw, I can see Liv now being still, now she's back in love with Dominic because Dominic would have helped her. It, it can be a situation like, see, Dominic really does care about me because he helped me again when that may not have actually been the case. But I do feel like that's the route that they're going. The crazy ex, Dominic's going to help out un, unintentionally and Liv is going to be trying to be in love with him again, potentially because he helped her out. So, also, uh, we got to talk about the the um, um, what's his name? Uh, Braun Breaker, Braun Breaker, and Sami Zayn. Braun Breaker had a great promo package talking about. I didn't take you seriously the first time we had our match. I believe at Money in the Bank. I didn't take you seriously, and now I know. You know, I'm taking things seriously now, but I know you aren't. He essentially is saying you have a comedy show coming up this weekend. Uh, Sammy's doing comedy as well. And he's like, you got a comedy show coming up this weekend. You already know you want to give up the title. You already, it's a foregone conclusion you're going to give it up because you're worried about comedy. But that's okay. I'm going to take the Intercontinental Championship off you. and You can go do comedy elsewhere. That's essentially what the promo was. And definitely enjoyed it. Love what they're doing with Braun Breaker there. And then, of course, you know, Sammy firing up before his match with Dominic Mysterio later on the night. He's like, that's funny that you make that point when in actuality at Money in the Bank, I had a comedy show before then too, and I still won. So you can take me lightly all you want. You can attack me from behind all you want. But at the end of the day, it isn't about teaching you a lesson no more. I don't give a damn about that. At SummerSlam, is about kicking your ass. So, obviously... You knew at some point at the end of the match between uh, Dominic and um, and Sami Zayn that the shenanigans were going to get involved, uh, were going to be involved, and uh, um, Braun Breaker was going to try once again to attack him from behind. He did, but Sami ended up getting the upper hand this time. For weeks, uh, Sami's been the at the end of a brutal spear and attack from Braun Breaker, but this week... He wasn't, which is kind of giving me an indication that he may end up losing at SummerSlam. So we'll see how that played out. But I love what they're doing with Braun Breaker. If you're going to put the title on him, I don't think anyone would trip. The guy, he he is legit. They present him as a legit threat on Monday Night Raw. And I love what they're doing with um, Braun Breaker. So, And then finally, we ended off the show with uh, Finn Balor versus Gunther. Obviously, uh, Gunther ended up winning by choking out Finn Balor. Um, and I like the promo he had before the match. He was basically like, yeah, man, like, Finn, I used to look up to you. But then you start hanging out with these fucking weirdos. And now you're you're basically street trash. When you was the guy. You were supposed to be, you were supposed to have greater accolades. Look at you now. Like, you're still good, but you could be so much better. Either way, you're still street trash because you hang out with Judgment Day. And I'm going to have to pack you up. And that's what happened. It was a solid match. It didn't really get enough time for it. But um, it was it was an okay match. Match ended up with Gunther choking out uh, Finn Balor. And then he, after the match was over, he kept the, the choke applied. Like he wouldn't let go. Damian Priest comes out there. And that's when Damian Priest, I'm not going to lie to you. Damian Priest was landing some stiff shots. Gunther was getting packed. It's rare that you see Gunther running. He was getting whooped all across ringside. It was a great sight to see. Love seeing Damian Priest fired up. 
I am definitely excited about this match. And the show ended off with Gunther trying to run away as Damian Priest was still giving out the beats, even uh, on damn it through the crowd. Um, but I love what they're doing with Damian Priest and Gunther. I'm still undecided. Uh, I'm going to probably get my preview and predictions later on this week. I, gotta, I have to really think about who can win and who can lose in some of these matches. But overall, it was a okay show. Like I said, this show was on autopilot. I don't I don't really think um, there was too much put into this show. Oh, also, um, um the members of YH6 they unmasked. So you finally started to you saw them tonight when they uh went up against Chad Gable and uh the Creed brothers. They finally unmasked tonight. They got in the ring, packed up the Creed brothers. It was cool to see them, you know, finally take off their mask. Uh, it was definitely weird to see Dexter Loomis with dreads now, but hey, you know, it, it you know, it, it stranger things can happen when you join a uh, a creepy family so it was cool to see that and i think next week on raw is going to be some of the y6 members going against chad gable and the creed brothers so we'll actually see some more in-ring action with them next week what i think a lot of people were interested in so that was another another noticeable thing that happened on the show but other than that middle of the road or middle of the road show for me I'm gonna give it like a six and a half out of ten. The ending was pretty good. The beginning was pretty solid. Everything else, good stuff, highs and lows. Nothing too crazy to go home about, even though this was the go home show. But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this episode of Monday Night Raw? Also, what is the match you're looking forward to the most at this year's SummerSlam? For me, it's gonna have to be that drew and cm punk match man i'm looking forward to it i know it's gonna be chaotic it's not really even gonna be a match it's gonna be a brawl because drew's gonna try to murder him cm punk's gonna try to murder drew seth rollins is just there to cause more chaos i'm here for it but i appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking to me see y'all next one peace